presidential elections in Guatemala are drawing near, as the country is gearing up to elect a successor to former president Otto Perez Molina after a devastating corruption scandal. Molina, along with former Vice President Roxana Baldetti, are currently being held in Guatemala City Prison for taking part in a customs corruption ring known as La Linea. The government had been discounting tariffs in exchange for bribes from importers. Guatemala also flooded world headlines earlier this month when a catastrophic mudslide took hundreds of lives and left dozens missing after heavy rains caused the site of a towering hill to break loose and come crashing down on a village below. Amid the political and environmental drama, the country must now elect a new leader. In the first round of elections on September 6, which drew record numbers to the polls, Guatemalan comedian Jimmy Morales took a surprising lead, followed by former First Lady Sandra Torres. The final round of voting will take place on October 25th. Our focus this week is on Guatemala. Hello and welcome to our Focus on Guatemala. I'm Tal Henrik. Next week, the people of Guatemala who have overthrown the corrupt regime of Otto Perez Molina will have to elect either a former first lady or a comedian as their new leader. Who has the upper hand? Let's find out with our first guest for today, local journalist Juan Luis Font. Hello, thank you for being on the show. Thank you very much. I'm very happy to talk to your audience in Israel. So, um, Jamie Morales won the first round of elections on October 6th. How do you rate his chances going in the second run? Well, he has a very big chance of becoming the next Guatemalan president. He, according to all the surveys, to all the polls that are known so far, he's on the lead. And he will very probably defeat Sandra Torres next Sunday, October 25th. So as an outsider with no political experience, does this count as an advantage or viewed as a disadvantage for the Guatemalan voter? And also, what does he offer to his uh, supporters? It definitely counts as an advantage for him because right now, at this moment, and along almost 2015, Guatemalan citizens have been very critic against the traditional politicians in our country. They are considered corrupt, they are considered very inefficient, and then they are considered selfish and only interested in their own greedy um, well-being. And Mr. Font, would you describe uh, Sandra Torres as the Guatemalan version of Hillary Clinton, since she's a former first lady, a Democrat, with a strong party behind her? I think that uh, somebody as Sandra Torres is a pioneer in a country like Guatemala. I mean, a pioneer as a woman who has been uh, fighting to reach the presidency in this country. She is, uh, she's the first one to run for presidency with a big, um, with a big possibility of, of uh, getting, the, um, getting the position. I think that she has a few similarities with Hillary Clinton, but I wouldn't say that she is backed for such a big and strong and organized structure as Hillary is in the U.S. And tell us in general, what do Guatemalans, Guatemalans expect of their new president? Maybe not most of the people, but those who really understand what is going on in the country are looking for a government who is able to fight against poverty, against inequality, and to build the big and the best ambience to create richness in, in a country that has almost half of its people living under the line of poverty and having very, a very terrible struggle every single day just to survive. Juan Luis Font, thank you so much for sharing your insights with us. Regina Jose Galindo is a Guatemalan performance artist who specializes in body art. In 2003, she walked from the Congress of Guatemala building to the National Palace, dipping her bare feet in a bowl full of human blood as a protest against the presidential candidacy of Guatemala's former dictator, Jose Montt. Another notable work included the Spanish word for bitch carved on her legs in protest against violence against women. And Regina is now joining us from Antigua, Guatemala. Hello and thank you for being on the show. 
Hi, thank you. So Regina, tell us what are the main messages that you're trying to advance through your creation? I don't want to send any message. I don't believe art has a didactical function or a spiritual guide to give a message. In my case, I'm an artist with a very clear political conscience. What's most important for me in my work is to give a different perspective on certain events and situations, and I am also very interested in historical memory. And how is buddy art accepted by the Guatemalan public? Regarding the medium, it has become more acceptable and it has changed in the last 10-15 years. There is a very contemporary scene, very active. Of course, we are speaking about a country with a very low educational level where people have a lot of daily life necessities. So although we say that there is a place for art in society, we can't speak about contemporary art having total acceptance, because in order to understand contemporary art, you need the presence of certain mechanisms. Some some mechanisms and tools that we are lacking in the region, but it is being produced, it is an active movement, and it is big. And what are you working on nowadays? Maybe something that has to do with the elections? Currently, I'm not working on anything specifically related to Guatemala. My work usually has two general functions, the ones I do in Guatemala and the ones which I do abroad in which I intend to relate to Guatemala. One of the priorities and intentions of my work is to show that the problems in the world exist in the first world just as they exist in the third world. Regina Jose Galindo, thank you so much for this. Muchas gracias a ustedes. And now let's see what else is going on in Guatemala. Guatemala's police have arrested and deported a group of 148 migrants in the Ruta del Atlantico. This is one of the main roads for migrants. Originating from Honduras, Cuba, and other Central American countries, migrants often travel through Mexico in order to reach the United States. Earlier this year, an overwhelming number of child migrants on the road have raised emotions among the international community. The search for victims of a massive landslide that engulfed much of the Guatemalan village of Al Cambre has been called off. After nearly two weeks of digging through the huge mound of earth that buried homes and their inhabitants, searchers have recovered nearly 300 bodies and dozens of people remain missing. The National Disaster Reduction Commission says that some of its staff will remain on site to keep working on rebuilding the village. A volcano near the Guatemalan capital roared back to life earlier this month, spewing ash high into the air. The Fuego volcano, which is just 50 kilometers from Guatemala City and its population of one million people, coughed out gas and ash 4,800 meters above sea level. Despite at least two lava flows, the eruption is not yet sufficiently dangerous to justify the evacuation of nearby villages. The popular Mexican telenovela Amor de Barrio filmed this week scenes of the finale episodes in the former capital of Guatemala, La Antigua. During her press conference, the producer of the series said the old city was chosen because its typical streets were the perfect frame for the final episodes of the telenovela. The successful series is a remake of the popular 1975 Muchacha de Barrio. The traditional dress in Guatemala is called tejido. The people of Guatemala are so proud of this particular textile technique that they have decided to grant the tejido a museum of its own. Casa del Tejido shows the local dress of many different Mayan groups as well as demonstrating the art of weaving. Now let's learn a thing or two about it from our next guest, Danilo Volvido and Janet Lopez, a descendant of the Maya and a weaver. Hi guys. Thank you for being with us. Hello, and thank you for having us uh, with you. Uh, we are here in Antigua, Guatemala, from the Museum Casa del Tejido. We are happy to, to be here as well. Happy to have you. Um, so first of all, tell us, what is exactly a tejido, and what, what makes it so unique? A tejido itself uh, is the process of the preparation of a hand-woven textile and uh, the product of, the, of a pre-Hispanic loom that is used in Guatemala. So uh, a tejido is used by an indigenous people, as you will see in, in the images, uh, or behind me are the tejidos. So 
It is uh, very special because it is a uh, part of our culture, our, our indigenous culture in Guatemala. What do you present at the museum? Tell us about, about the exhibitions. The exhibit consists of various indigenous clothing because in various regions they have various dresses, uh, various colors, designs, and so we explain uh, a bit about them all. There's a large variety of indigenous textiles and so uh, also the, the preparation of the textile. Uh, there are weavers such as uh, Miss Janet uh, here in the exhibit that will show you how it is made so you can uh, really see the, the, the process. Danilo, does everybody in Guatemala have one in their closet? Do you have one, a tejido? Uh, yes. Well, me, as part of my work, I always have to have a tejido to oh, yeah. uh, exhibit uh, our culture. Um, but of course, 55% uh, of, uh, of uh, people in Guatemala uh, of the population are indigenous uh, people, descendants directly of the Maya. And so they wear clothing, uh, textiles such you see here behind me and my uh, co-worker, Ms. Uh, Janet, uh, wearing. And so she, she, this is her everyday clothing. And so we are um, here exhibiting that part of our culture in the, in the museum. Danilo and beautiful Ms. Lopez, thank you so much for this colorful interview. 22 volcanoes are located in Guatemala's highlands and Pacific coast. Some of them offer an adventurous tourist attraction, but others mostly offer danger. And if you want to know which ones, you better listen carefully to our next interview with volcano expert Mr. Benjamin Andrews from Washington, D.C. Hello, sir. Thank you for Hi, joining. Hi, thanks for having me. Um, so how many volcanoes are currently active in Guatemala and how often do they turn, tend to erupt? Right now, there are two volcanoes that are erupting. One is Fuego Volcano, and it is located near, um, it's located near Antigua, Guatemala. Mm -hmm. And the other volcano that's actively erupting right now is Santa Maria Volcano, particularly the Santiaguito Lava Dome. And this is very close to the city of Quetzaltenango in Guatemala. There's also another volcano, Pacaya, which is nearer to Guatemala City, and it had activity as recently as about a month ago, some small explosions. Describe to us the magnitude of, of danger that it possessed to the nearby population. Sure. So the, the types of hazards that these volcanoes pose are primarily from ash fall, and that's when a volcanic explosion happens that lofts volcanic ash up to several kilometers high, and at that point it can then fall down on tops of houses or on people, and that, that can collapse house roofs. It can also pose a respiratory problem. The other problem that ash causes is with airplanes. If a lot of ash is in the air, airplanes should not fly through that ash or the airplanes will crash. And so that's, that's the main hazard that these volcanoes are posing is from ash fall. There's also hazards that they pose in a closer closer to the volcano, and those come from lava flows, which can, essentially a big wall of lava can slowly flow down and inundate a, inundate a village or destroy a house or destroy structures. You can also have pyroclastic flows, which are the very dangerous currents of hot ash and gas that flow down the side of a volcano at 50 kilometers per hour or even faster, and those destroy almost everything in their path. The last type of hazard that these volcanoes can pose are lahars, or volcanic mud flows. And these are fortunately restricted to the valleys on the sides of, of the volcanoes, but these can travel very quickly and can be a wall of mud that might be a meter and a half feet thick and 20 meters wide, traveling at many, many kilometers per hour. And again, they can destroy almost everything in their path. Mm -hmm. Mr. Andrews, describe to us uh, your work. What does a volcano expert actually do? Can, can monitors really predict the next eruption? Sure. So, so in, my, in my work, I don't focus on the forecasting of eruptions. Uh -huh. Instead, I study ancient eruptions to learn about, essentially, how future eruptions will likely occur. Uh -huh. So I can do that by looking at the rocks and seeing how what were the conditions that those rocks were stored at before the eruption? So how hot was the magma? Was the magma at 800 degrees Celsius or was it at 1,000 degrees Celsius? 
And I can also study how deep it was. D did the eruption come from magma that was two kilometers below our feet or 10 kilometers below our feet? And those types of observations that I can make ultimately help other scientists who are engaged in the monitoring of volcanoes. And those scientists are often seismologists who use earthquakes to listen for new, new activity at volcanoes. And by listening to those earthquakes, they can see where magma might be stored below a volcano and if that magma is moving and coming up to the surface. Sounds like an exciting uh, job. Thank you so much for this interview. Sure. And of course, thank you all for being with us, focusing on Guatemala. And remember, if you want to go hiking next to a volcano, just make sure that it's a non-active one. See you again soon.